Hello, dear students. Today we will discuss about a very important topic of the general pharmacology, and that is first pass metabolism of drugs. Now, what are the learning objectives of the today's session? What is first pass metabolism? Which are the different sites for the first pass metabolism? Then. examples of the certain drugs having high first pass metabolism and lastly which is very important is clinical importance of the first pass metabolism because whatever we are learning in the pharmacology ultimately uh, there must be some clinical correlation and that we have to know and we have to apply this knowledge in our clinical practice so what is first pass metabolism as the name suggest it is the metabolism of the drug during its first passage now what do you mean by first passage once the drug is absorbed then the drug reaches into the systemic circulation and then it is it reaches to the target site and produces the action now if a drug is metabolized in between its site of absorption and entry into the systemic circulation that type of the metabolism in between the site of the absorption and before entering into the systemic circulation is known as a first pass metabolism and dear friends if you just look carefully the difference between many a times the students are confused that obviously sir the metabolism occurs uh, with uh, each and every or so, or we can say that majority of the drugs then why it how or how it differs from the first pass metabolism okay the difference is that in the routine metabolism once the drug enters into the systemic circulation and then it reaches to the target site and produces the action after that some amount of the drug is metabolized and some amount is eliminated unchanged by the kidney or the drug is primarily eliminated unchanged by the kidney or there are other pathways but but here the metabolism of the drug occurs after the drug enters into the systemic circulation while here in case of first pass metabolism before entering into the systemic circulation the drug is metabolized and that's why if you just think what is its impact on the bioavailability if the drug is having a high first pass metabolism its bioavailability will be definitely less and again i am repeating the same sentence again and again that here the metabolism of the drug before it enters into the systemic circulation and that's why it is also known as a pre systemic metabolism now second objective is what are the different sites or which are the different sites for the first pass metabolism now for knowing this it has to be dependent on the route of the drug administration now how this route will decide if you just think about what is the difference between this oral route how it differs in the parenteral and the transdermal route because in all these different routes if you look at the site for the drug absorption obviously it is different in case of the oral route major amount of the drug is absorbed through the small intestinal mucosa in case of a different parenteral routes like subcutaneous intramuscular intravenous the drug is enters into the uh, through the capillaries into the vascular compartment ultimately and in case of a transdermal route through the dermis layer the drug is entered into the capillaries and finally enters into the vascular compartments now how this will decide the differences in the site of the first pass metabolism now go to the definition of the first pass metabolism metabolism occurs of the drug in the pathway 
between the site of the absorption and systemic circulation and obviously in all these routes the site of the absorption is different and that's why this pathway is different for oral parenteral and transdermal route now we will see one by one the sites for first pass metabolism of all these routes in case of a oral route once the uh, we all know that major amount of the drug whether it is acidic or basic but it is uh, major amount is primarily absorbed from the small intestine because of the surface area of the small intestine now once the drug is absorbed in the small intestine the mucosal vessels the drug enters into the portal vein and through the portal vein the drug enters into the liver and inside the drug inside the liver the drug is metabolized and after that the remaining active component of the drug enters into the systemic circulation now this is a routine process it occurs with the uh, majority of the drugs but in certain cases the amount of the drug enters into the liver through the portal vein before entering into the systemic circulation is very high and not only that is high but in addition to that hepatic metabolism of the drug to the inactive components is also very high and that's why the active amount of the drug that reaches to the systemic circulation is very less so we can say that the liver is the major target site for the first pass metabolism in case of orally administered drug but one other side is also remaining that i have not shown you in this uh, figure is that th once the drug is absorbed from the small intestinal mucosa in the small intestinal wall itself there are many enzymes and the drug is metabolized in the small intestinal wall itself before entering into the systemic circulation so that is another side now next is the parenteral route as i have told you either through the subcutaneous or intramuscular or intravenous ultimately the drug is absorbed into the vessels or the capillaries that are present into that vicinity so the drug enters into the vascular compartment now do you think that whichever is the possible uh, target uh, sorry the site of the first pass metabolism because the drug enters into the vascular compartment already but dear friends if you look carefully the drug enters into the peripheral capillaries and then enters into the veins and then the drug enters into the right side to the, the vena cava the drug enters into the right side of the heart and from there the drug enters into the lungs and some drugs and up to a certain extent metabolized inside the lungs and the remaining active part of the drug through the pulmonary vessels enter into the left side of the heart and then it enters into the systemic circulation so we can say that the lungs theoretically uh, theoretically we can definitely say that in the lungs the drug is metabolized before it enters into the arterial system or the systemic circulation but again i am repeating this type of the first pass metabolism is not clinically very important similarly the next route is transdermal route when we apply any transdermal patch the drug is absorbed normally And these are highly lipid soluble drugs so they are absorbed through the buccal layers and into the capillaries present into the mucosa skin mucosa but but there are some amount of the drug that is metabolized even before enters into the dermal capillaries so again we can say that before entering into the systemic circulation drug can be metabolized in the skin but again i am telling you that this is true but it is not clinically very common and clinically very significant also so the most important side and the clinical significant side for the first pass metabolism is the hepatic first pass metabolism now 
What are the different possibilities? If you have administered the drug orally and you know that the drug is having high first pass metabolism, there are two possibilities. If the drug is extensively metabolized, so negligible amount or nil amount of the drug enters into the systemic circulation. So you have to and have to give this drug by the parenteral route or the drug is having high first pass metabolism but some amount of the drug enters into the systemic circulation. And in that case, if you can afford to give the drug in a higher amount, then you can achieve a required plasma concentration of the drug. And because of that, you can give the drug orally. Now what I want to say by the uh, using the word that if you can afford to give the higher amount, because if a drug is having a very wide safety margin, then and then you can afford to give a higher amount of the drug, higher dose of the drug, otherwise it's not possible. Okay, so now if, now we will go to the examples, if the drug is having extensive first pass metabolism and that's why the how to and how to give by the parenteral route are lignocaine, it is a or the lidocaine it is the most commonly used local anesthetic it is extensively metabolized and that's why it has to be given by a parenteral route same way the hydrocortisone testosterone isoprenaline all these drugs they have to be given by the parenteral route and the drugs that are having high first pass metabolism but you can give this drug by the oral route and examples are now many a times there are difficulty in remembering the examples here you can just remember if possible only these three terms beta receptors nitrates and opioids now the beta receptors you can remember the beta agonist and beta antagonist that is called beta blocker in beta agonist you all know that the salbutamol it is a selective beta 2 agonist which is used to abort the acute attack of bronchial asthma because it is potent bronchodilator but it is an extensively metabolized by the liver and if you just check its oral dose versus parenteral dose oral tablet is available as a 2 to 4 milligram while if you give by the inhalation route, it is 100 to 200 micrograms. So there is a very wide variation between oral and parenteral route. Same way the beta blocker, propranolol. Propranolol is a non-selective beta blocker. It is extensively metabolized by the liver. And its metabolism is so much high that there is a one specific terminology is used. That is... The metabolism of propranolol is dependent on hepatic blood flow. It means that the amount of the propranolol that is entering into the liver is going to be metabolized and it is the amount of the hepatic blood flow that will determine that how much quantity of the propranolol is metabolized. As compared to that, atenolol that is also beta blocker even though cardio selective but it is primarily eliminated unchanged by the kidney. Then nitrates, glycerol trinitrate and isosorbide dinitrate and lastly opioids, morphine and pethidine. There are many more examples but if you can remember this much that is fine. And what is its clinical importance? As I have told you that the oral dose is significantly higher as compared to the parenteral dose. So finally... What are the different clinically important uh, points to be considered for the first pass metabolism? First and foremost is, as we have seen in the previous slide, oral dose is significantly higher as compared to the parenteral dose. And, and if a drug is having high first pass metabolism and if you have decided to give the drug in a patient having liver disorder, then you have to reduce the dose of the drug because the drug is not going to be metabolized in the liver and that's why the higher amount of the drug enters into the systemic circulation and that's why there are chances of toxicity. So if the patient is having hepatic disease and if you have to give a drug having high first pass metabolism 
you have to significantly reduce the dose of the drug and the third yes it's a very important point to understand that i have told you that there are two principal pathways for the elimination of the drug okay these are the hepatic metabolism and renal elimination now individuals capacity to metabolize the drug is varied widely because the hepatic enzymes level as well as the functioning capacity of the enzyme level is significantly different between the different individuals and that's why the metabolism will vary and that's why the bioavailability will vary and that's why the clinical response will vary considerably while in case of the renal elimination there is no significant inter individual variation and that's why the bioavailability is also not very different and that's why the dose variation is also not high okay and lastly chances of drug interaction that i will give you in the assignment whenever we are discussing about the drug interactions you have to remember the clinically significant drug interactions okay so now you have to find the two examples of clinically significant drug interactions due to high first pass metabolism and the second assignment even though i have not mentioned over here suppose a drug uh, you have selected for a particular condition and that is having a high first pass metabolism in the liver now you have to tell me the different ways by which you one can avoid that first pass metabolism okay so that is all about the today's session next time we will discuss some another interesting topic of general pharmacology if you like this channel please subscribe it and share it thanks a lot